One other way to abuse FM synthesis is to take a rather exotic modulator function. In this example, we'll take the hyperbolic sine and see what comes out. Hyperbolic functions, in contrast to trigonometric ones, are defined on a hyperbola rather than on a circle. The hyperbolic sine, in particular, is a function that quickly approaches positive and negative infinity for both positive and negative arguments. It's not periodic, at least not in the real domain. So, what if we take a normal FM and exchange the sine modulator for a hyperbolic sine? Let's find out. Let's look at how those functions look plotted first. I've adjusted the buffer size of the scope so we can see two periods. We'll first take a simple phaser and plot that. Next we take a cycle object and see the well-known cosine coming out of the second outlet. Okay, just for demonstration purposes, I'll scale the phaser up to a range from minus 5 to 5 and pipe that into a sin H. And that's what it looks like. Actually, it's approaching positive and negative infinity here, but naturally in a DSP environment that's clipped somewhere. Now what would happen if we use this hyperbolic sign to modulate a cosine oscillator? We'll try that out, scaling from 100 to 1000 here and using that as a cycle's frequency. Okay, rather than the soft vibrator we get from another cosine oscillator modulating it, we get a rather fierce sweep. Alright, but where is the indeterminacy? Let's add another few parameters to this. First we can make the modulation frequency adjustable from outside. Secondly, the same for the modulation amplitude. We do that by simply adding a multiplication after the phaser and adding another inlet. Now we're getting that interesting FM sound.
there's another distinction we can make. Because we're multiplying the phasor's output by positive values, we're taking only the positive half wave of the synage. We can see that in the spectrum too, because we have uh, the C offset here, which we'd have to remove. We could, however, optionally scale the phasor's output from minus one to one, so we also get the negative half wave. Let's try that out too. Last, we can add the typical FM carrier frequency parameter. Now, the FM theory behind this phenomenon is uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. Understanding plain FM synthesis alone involves difficult math, such as modeling partials, amplitudes as Bessel functions, etc. But it's not necessary. We're only interested in rich timbres and we've got a lot of them at our disposal here.